Look at a child all you want to, and look at babies all you want to, but you've got to be able to be able to uh, have a child to know that you know a diaper rash is on this way, and what to put on it, what not to put on it, uh, or what to, to make it where you won't have a diaper. You don't have no man. You got to call somebody, Mama. What do I do with the baby? The baby looks like it's crying all the time. Well, you got the burp and you got colic, uh, whatever that is. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it's tough. You got the burp and. Uh, uh, you got you know you don't know what to do with a child. Somebody got to tell you. Right, right, right. Same thing in marriage. Marriage, you almost got to be coached through this thing. Right. You just don't walk into marriage just knowing what to do. Right. Amen. Colossians, Colossians chapter uh, three, verse number eighteen says, <laughs> "Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands." As it is fit in the Lord. Right. Submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. Now, what he's basically saying is that you need to submit yourself to your husband. He says your own husband, which means not to everybody else. And some people can submit to a whole lot of other folks. They can submit the man on the job. They can submit the man down the street. They can do all kinds of stuff. But when it comes to their own husband, then you, you, you shut up. You know, you know, go sit down. You know, they talk to him like a dog. No, submit to your own husband. And as, as women of the church, submit to your husband, uh, then your husband won't be mad when you come and do things at the church. Because a man is not going to be happy with the man at the church when at home you acting like the devil. <laughs> Hello? He's not going to be happy with the pastor. I become the target. He's not going to be happy with the pastor when you find you follow what he say do, but you won't do nothing that your husband will say to do. It's not fair to the pastor. It's not fair to the pastor. Thank you. <laughs> 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 Wherever he is. Praise God. <laughs> and it says as fit unto the Lord which means that you obey your, your husband but you don't go do something and you know it's not right so your husband tells you to do this or tell you to do that and that's absolutely not right it says as fit in the Lord you submit to him as fit in the Lord you just don't do everything he tells you to do if it's not right if he tell you we're going to go rob a bank you tell him no you go rob I'm not going to rob a bank In fact, I don't want nothing. Anyway, uh, verse 19 says, Husbands, love your wives. Do what? Love them. Love them. They're not perfect, but love them. Just like you're not perfect. Love your wives and be not bitter against them. My God. I want you to know, we used to sing a song, every word of God is right, hallelujah to his name. Uh, I want you to know that every word in the word of God is not there by accident. It is breathed, it is inspired word of God. So now, what did he tell the husband? He said for the husband not to be bitter against his wife. What makes a person bitter? A person gets bitter when they have worked with you and talked to you over and over and over and over and over and over, and over again. Yeah. And it seems like you just don't hear what they have to say. Yeah. Another thing about men is men tend to, if you if you got a husband of some sort, most men, I'll say, most men, uh, when they get hurt or mad, they get quiet. They call it Stonewall. Some folks say it's pouting. No, it ain't pouting. Amen. Pouting is to try to get your attention. That's what children do. But when a man gets quiet because he's hurt or mad or whatever it is, he's really hurt and he's really trying to protect himself. That's the difference between pouting and Stonewall. 
He's saying, listen, this woman that made me either so mad or she's hurt me so until I can't talk to her no more because it hurts too much. And when a man stops talking to you, then whatever he's mad at you about is not getting resolved. Time might be going on. Days, weeks, months, sometimes even years might be going on, but it's not resolved. And when it's not resolved, guess what? It's building up. And when it's building up, guess what? It perks, makes a person bitter. Mm, that's right. See, women, they get out of their system what's on their hearts. Oh, yeah. Whatever's on their mind, whatever they, listen, let's talk. Can we talk? Let's sit down. I need to talk with you. And so, therefore, she'll tell him what's on her mind, but he may not always tell her what's on his because sometimes he feels uncomfortable. Sometimes he feels less than. Sometimes it makes him feel less macho. Sometimes he feels like you ain't gonna respect him. Sometimes he feels, uh, you know, so he don't tell you all about it. And, and if, if he does attempt to tell you, and then you scream and holler and discount whatever he's saying, then he shuts down and he becomes bitter. So the Bible says, husband, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Mm-hmm. All right, now moving on. Point number, point number, uh, well, you know what? First Peter, first Peter 3 and 1. First Peter 3 and 1. Tomorrow Valentine's Day. This is the love month. And it was my intentions really to talk about marriage all month long. Uh, various aspects of it. Because we need the word of God. Amen. Amen. The word of God comes to stir up your minds. And challenge us in areas that we all need to grow and develop. First Peter 3 and 1 says, Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection uh, to your own husbands, saying the same thing. Peter said that. Paul said it then. Now Peter said two different people. He says uh, that if any obey not the word, they also may be without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. In the Amplified, it says, in like manner, you married women be submissive to your own husbands subordinate yourselves as being secondary to and dependent upon and adapt yourselves to them so that even if any do not obey the word of God, they may be won over not by discussion. You ain't gonna win it by a bunch of talking. (laughs) By what? He says, but by the godly lies of your wife. He says here in the word of God, he says this is unconditional respect. You must respect that man because he's your husband. You don't respect him because he treats you right completely. Oh, I know I lost you. Wow. For the Bible, see, we say that you must earn my respect. See, we want unconditional love. How many women want unconditional love? All of us. Men too. I'm saying all of us, all of us want unconditional love. We don't want to earn love. We want you to just love us. But we also need unconditional respect. Okay. Now, Mama said, no, you don't unconditionally respect him. He must earn your respect. All right. No. No. The word of God says, even if he don't obey the word, which means he might be a rascal. Even if he ain't right, he says, submit to him, and when you have not by a whole lot of talking, yes, yes. My God. but by your lifestyle. All right. Skip it on down to the man. Verse 7. <laughs> Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to you got to study your wife. Right. If you 
you're going to survive in marriage, you better know what she likes and what she doesn't like. You must understand, first of all, you're going to care, number one. Then secondly, you need to study her. What is it that 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 will send her over the edge? Don't do that. Dwell with her according to knowledge. Dwell with her. You you know you know uh, your wife. You know how she is. You know her idiosyncrasies. You know her personality. You know what what she deal with. Why would you continue to do things that keep on making problems? Stop it. Dwell with her according to knowledge. This is where you give up your rights. Because maybe dwelling with her according to knowledge means that you got to make sure that you're not doing what you want to do, but you got to do what she needs done. You need to do what, what makes her happy. Hello? Dwell with them according to knowledge, giving what? Honor unto the wife. All right. You dwell with her, you give her honor. She is to be respected. She is to be loved. She is to be valued. Amen. She is to be honored. She is to be held in high esteem. All right. And it says, dwell with her honor unto the wife. As unto the weaker vessel. It doesn't mean that she is the weaker vessel. It means that you treat her like she, uh, like that you are there to take care of her, to provide her, to protect her. You don't do this. You don't do that. Let me do this for you. Amen? Amen. It says, as a weaker vessel, as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Brothers, I want you to know if you don't get along with your wife, you're not getting any prayers through. That's right, amen. God doesn't even hear your prayers. God doesn't even hear what you're saying when you don't honor your wife. He doesn't under he doesn't hear what you're saying when you don't respect your wife. When you treat your wife wrong, you over there praying, Lord, uh, change this woman. He ain't even listening to that. He don't hear that. Yes. You just talking in the air. You talking to you. Said your prayers are hindered yes. when you don't treat your wife right. Amen. Amen. So point number four was they must learn to live in harmony. Mm -hmm. Point number five, we're almost done here. They must learn how to enjoy one another. Amen. If you're going to survive marriage, it should not be uh, always a battleground. That's right. It should be something that is joyous, joyous. and something that's enjoyable. Amen? Amen. Amen. Proverbs, actually, Titus 2 and 3. Titus 2 and 3. As I said, one of the pastoral epistles, Titus 2 and 3, simply says, in Titus 2 and 3, says, uh, uh, the age women, likewise, that they be in uh, be in behavior as becometh holiness. We have a standard of living that the world does not have. Not false accusers. You know, sometimes women have good intuition, but sometimes it's off. <laughs> I trust my senses. No, sometimes you are. Just as off as you can be. Don't be false accusers. Don't accuse people before you got the facts. Don't accuse people until you know what you're talking about. Well, I spec and I feel and I was just in my spirit, you know, and I, uh-uh, no. 